And this is why a man will begin to talk to someone at the office and begin to flirt, and he is satisfying, and I'm going to say this in a very strong way, but he's satisfying an appetite that you created in him. They may get me, but I'm in defense of him. Pastor Robert Morris, this is, now that was wrong what he did. Now, Pastor Morris, he was wrong what he did, and he made an error, but he made it 40 years ago. Let's uh, take a look to, what she, to her defense of Robert Morris, okay? We thank God, and that's why we forget this may not have a lot to do with it. And we know so many, uh, we've heard so many exposures, even among pastors. But you know, this is, this is First Lady, and I heard, and I'm, I'm saying this in kindness because they may, get me, but I'm in, they may get me, but I'm in defense of him. Pastor Robert Morris, this is, now that was wrong what he did. Now, Pastor Morris, he was wrong what he did, and he made an error, but he made it 40 years ago. And in 40 years, we don't find where he fell anymore. In my heart, I believe that God has forgiven the man. I believe God has forgiven the man and that he should move on. But people are still holding him responsible for what he did 40 years ago. And it should have never been done. That's wrong. But I'm saying, if you're going to hold that pastor in content, you ought to take all these bishops and hold them in content. How in the world can you make him guilty? See, this is compassion. You, when you ask God to forgive you, forgive. But you got all of these bishops that have done sin. You got sin that you're talking about children, how you've affected children. You got children in your congregation looking at you. Know that the children sitting in the congregation don't belong to you. But we can forgive that because you know what? Our blessings are not according to our mercies. I'm glad it's according to God's mercy. If, he's, if you're going to sit them down, sit all of them down. Take them bishops, sit them down. All of y'all sit down. All y'all up in the, all of y'all that's up in the uh, clubhouse, they need to sit down too. Why are we take? You know, that's why I'm glad the Bible said it is of the Lord's mercies. If it left it to man, Amen. None of us would be forgiven. But it's of the Lord's mercy. Yeah, He should not have done that, but you shouldn't have done what you did either. And the problem they got is that you were caught. We don't care about sin. You can sin, do all you want, just don't get caught. If we want to talk about different things in mercy, you want to talk about abortion? Yes, abortion is wrong. But what about fornication? Is that which one will take you to hell, uh, fornication or abortion? Both of them will take you to hell. We use we take our own definition of what is right and what is wrong and what is pitiful and what is not. But God's compassion goes beyond that. I'm saying stop holding up these signs about abortion. Somebody hold up a sign about purity. You wouldn't have no oh, but you, we would not have abortion if people stopped committing adultery. You wouldn't have it. You wouldn't have men messing up in the pulpit if they stopped committing adultery. Stop commit. But you know what? Nobody is teaching purity, abstinence. Where is that? We don't see no signs, but you want to come up. Oh, my God, how dare these women sitting up here having a book. Yeah, they're wrong, but you're wrong, too. The only difference between them, you ain't got caught. Did you keep yourself before you got married? Okay, I'm messing up now. I'm not. What were you? I'm going to my seat. When you. All right. So that is the prof. Uh, I found her. Patricia. Her name. Lady elect Patricia. Okay. She. She. I guess that's just the title that they've given her at her church. Emmanuel Temple. Okay. So clearly this is also the problem. Right. Women shouldn't be preaching. What she's doing. She's making everything like equal. Are we all sinners? Yes, absolutely. We are all sinners. So that doesn't mean that we cannot speak uh, on sinful things simply because you are a sinner. Okay. In her mind, she came out. She said she's in defense uh, of, of Robert Morris, right? Because she does believe that Robert Morris, uh, she believes that God has forgiven Robert Morris, right? Robert Morris has repented. How does she know that? Huh? How does she know that? You cannot presume on God. What we're talking about here is Robert Morris in his own words, right? Robert Morris in his own actions. He's the one who told uh, for 35 years that he was immoral with a young lady. Now things have come out to light that it was a 12-year-old. So at what point did Robert Morris come out publicly to say that, oh, by the way, I lied. It wasn't a young lady. It was a 12-year-old. I'm not aware of it. So Robert Morris hasn't done that. Not only that, Robert Morris has just stepped down quietly to the sunset. And prior to this, remember what Robert Morris was doing, right? He wasn't, quote unquote, repenting. He was just saying like, oh, you know what? I already took care of it. Um, 
I already took care of those things long time ago, right? That's what he was saying. I already took care of those things long time ago. Remember, the church issued a statement when this story came out. Once they realized, like, oh, wait a minute, we, we can no longer control this PR, that's when all the elders be like, oh, we didn't know it was a 12 year old. I grant they might have not known, right? But the point is, Robert Morris was involved to say, like, oh, we, we already dealt with these things before, okay? So, you know, between that time and now, yes, truly, Robert Morris could have repented and everything. But what we have in our domain right now, we simply cannot say, like, okay, this is okay because it was in the past. Quite honestly, if it was that, oh, okay, she wasn't 12, it was a, she was an adult, we'll be like, okay, he shouldn't have done that, okay? He's still disqualified from the ministry, okay? But that person's an adult. But not only is he disqualified from ministry, okay? He did that while he was married, and then he did that to a child. And then he covered it up. These are the things that are out there, just in the public domain. So... Defend Robert Morris all you want, but you cannot excuse the sin. That's actually clear. So what we are saying, we are not saying that we are not sinners, right? We are not saying that Robert Morris cannot be forgiven. There's no sin that is beyond redemption, okay? Anybody can be forgiven. Robert Morris is alive and well and still breathing today, which means he has an opportunity to set the record straight to repent and everything else. So what has happened to Robert Morris should serve as a lesson from all of us. So, but this is not the time to be saying like, oh, let's not do this, let's not do, no, no, no. It's time for us, what can we learn from how Robert Morris has done these things? Right now, like remember, we also have the situation with Tony Evans, right? Tony Evans' situation has not been disclosed, okay? Fine, he's decided to, to keep that scene qu see, uh, quiet, right? What happens 10, 15 years from now when it becomes public? And not only that, Cindy was having this conversation like we read in the article, right? In 2007, in 2005, all these other things. It's just now that, ooh, everything else is, has, has come to the light. So this woman, she's she says like, oh, okay, how many of you guys were not, you know, the issue is not about people are deleting their babies. The issue is about fornication. Lady, it's both. Because how are you going to end up deleting your baby if you were not doing those things, right? We know fornication is sin. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be fornicating and you shouldn't be killing your babies. And not all the sin is, is, is the same. The scripture makes that distinction, okay? When you kill somebody, if you steal, you, you're going to get a different sentence, right? The law recognizes that. And when you kill somebody, it's a different sentence, okay? So not all the sin is, is the same. There's different categories of sin and there's different punishments. So she's out here preaching like, oh, you guys are also doing the same thing. Like, like what are you talking about? Go home, <laughs> Lady Patricia, okay? <laughs> no women pastors, okay? We, we reject all women pastors. They do not belong on the pulpit by any stretch of imagination. So no wonder... If they are comp she's already compromised by preaching, right? So what else is she going to compromise on? Okay. But all these things, right? Don't you know these things is serving as grace when these things are exposed? Okay, like you know, people can mean it for good, but you know, for bad, but God always means those bad things, right? For good. Look what happened to Joseph. So instead of us looking like, oh, okay, now we need to be paging the evil among us. Getting these people out from the pulpit. No, we want to put them back in the pulpit. God has exposed them so they should leave the pulpit. But no, we'll be like, oh no, God, we're just going to put them back in the pulpit. So God be okay. That's what you want? How about it? <laughs> How about it? So instead of us looking at it in that way, we are always, you know, trying to create uh, our own thing. Okay. The, the exposing that's happening is so that people should come to repentance and the church should wake up. What happened to uh, during COVID, right? All the churches were what were shut down, right? That exposed the churches. Now some churches never open, some never recovered, and then up open, they'll be like, you know what? We're never going to close again, right? So that saved as a wake up call, okay? You wake up call, so uh, we shouldn't be uh, sleeping, okay? Wake up from your sleeping samba. So those are the things that you know, people are missing. So even like, we'll be like, okay, you know, Robert Morris has repented. What's the issue? Okay. Like if just because somebody has repented, that doesn't mean that there won't be a certain expectations, right? In terms of, you know, it might be restitution in terms of like, okay, like, like right now in this situation, right? This guy, uh, the son-in-law, right? If he'll be like, uh, you know what? Kids moving forward. 
No more sleeping overs at grandpa. That doesn't mean he hasn't forgiven his grandpa. He's just exercising wisdom. You see what I'm saying? So now if Robert Morris comes like, oh, you know, you haven't forgiven me. No, no, no. Grandpa, I've forgiven you. But, you know, moving forward, there will be no sleepovers. That's it. You are exercising wisdom. You've got to be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. But now, because this person has been forgiven, you'll be like, okay, that's fine, okay? All gates are open. Now you can you come back on the pulpit again. You can be in charge of the children's ministry. Oh, if, after all, he's been restored. You see? So, yeah. So even though this lady, she's saying that like, uh, would you trust this guy with your, with your grandkids? If the answer is no, then what are you saying? <laughs> we don't buy that. We don't buy that. We don't buy that. Yeah. Robert Morris uh, outed himself, okay? And this weak, rebellious roots. Um, my rebellion took a form uh, of immorality uh, that I don't like to talk about much. Uh, I, I was very sexually immoral uh, as a teenager. And it started early in my life, and it, became, it was very easy for me. Now, I'm going to share something with you that um, I've really had to struggle with sharing the details, things that I, I'm going to be sharing with you today, but... Um, when I say it was easy for me, uh, I, 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 I was very immoral, and I was immoral a lot. And I can remember a conversation with my friends, uh, and they, they said, the one of them said, uh, you're just blessed. That's what they said. Because we would go out and meet girls, and I would end up being immoral uh, just, from a one, just in one night. And, and so they began actually, it's so, it's so horrible to share this because of what the word blessed means to me now and that I've written a book called The Blessed Life, and it's about giving, not taking. And it's about giving to give, not giving to get. So it's the total opposite of the way I was before I met Christ. Here's what I've realized. I was not blessed, I was cursed. There was a, a curse on my life where immorality came easy for me. In other words, there was a bent toward that. I'm gonna show you that the Lord showed me what the root of that curse was. The reason I'm gonna show you is because I think there's, if there's a bent toward your life in a cert, toward a certain sin, Maybe God could show you the root, and you could cut the root off and not have that fruit anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I learned to lie and manipulate. Uh, because I also had rejection, uh, I didn't want to be rejected. So I looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. Please hear me. There's a reason I'm, I'm sharing this. Uh, the very thing, ladies, that the world tells you to give a man before marriage so that you can keep him is the very thing that will cause you to lose him. Uh, I looked for girls that did not have a good relationship with their father. I learned to spot that. I looked for girls that were insecure. And uh, I don't know, now I look back on this, I can tell I did it. It wasn't like a plan that I had, but I could, I could spot this. Uh, girls were made to be held by men. And if they are not held, if that need is not met in a healthy way by their father, they will meet it in an unhealthy way. But you need to understand that if a man does not respect you, he cannot love you. So, Cindy has, uh, she has done an interview where she has disclosed that that wasn't the case. Okay? Uh, Cindy Kremisha, she said she grew up in a, uh, in a loving home. Uh, the father was present. In fact, her father is still alive. So, she was fine. She grew up, she was just fine. But when she was 12, um... This allegedly, okay, we have to say that these days, uh, invited, uh, invited Cindy to, you know, uh, like when, whenever he visited, like you know, they were traveling in the car. So he told Cindy that, oh, you should come to my room. So that's when Cindy was 12 naive, went to the room and he proceeded to do whatever else. Right. So every time he'll be making a joke, like maybe he'll be. Uh, uh, fixing something, then he'll point at Cindy, showing her like a screwdriver, telling her, like, oh, you, you, you know, like, you know, making those uh, similar comments. So Cindy actually shared herself, say like, no, my family was fine. We grew up fine. We used to pray. We used to do all those things. So she did an interview, but, you know, we won't be able to uh, play the interview over here. So I'm, what I'm telling you is what was in the inter, what she was saying in the interview, that she... You know, she's aware she has no recourse, legally speaking, because the statute of limitation has expired both in Texas as well as in Oklahoma. So right now she wants to be an advocate that people who've gone through this and there's people who have reached out to her 
telling her, um, you know, telling her also uh, their own struggles as well, which I think, okay, you know, something good can come, uh, can come out of this, okay? So let's uh, listen to some more things that this guy is telling us, and then I'll share a little bit more of what uh, Cindy uh, shared as well. Lust turns to hate. And I, I wish I had time to show you the whole passage. 2 Samuel 13 talks about Amnon and Tamar, and that Amnon really loved her. He loved her, and that Tamar loved him. Uh, but Amnon forces her and uh, rapes her. And then I want to just show you one, one verse. Really, I'd love for you to read the whole chapter later. Verse, seven, verse 15 says, Then Amnon, this is right after uh, it happens, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said, Arise and be gone. And she said, No, please don't send me away. And he actually calls a servant and says, Throw this woman out and bolt the door behind her. Um, there is, God meant for us to express love in a healthy way. Because of the lust that was in my life, I, it, it has taken years for me to get over the images and the things that I saw that no person should have ever seen. And the appetites that were created in me that God never intended to be created in me. Please understand that when God says don't, there's a reason. And I'll just give you one quick so that you, hopefully you'll understand this. Uh, in order to have premarital sex, you have to sneak around to do it. And you have to lie and you have to be deceptive and you have to be manipulative. You, you have, for instance, let me just take a teenage couple. When the teenager is about to go out and the parents say, where are y'all going tonight? They don't say, we're going to have sex. <laughs> so they have to lie. And then when they come back, where'd you, where'd you go? What'd you do? They have to lie. So you learn to lie. You learn to be deceptive. And you get this um, feeling in you of adrenaline, adrenaline rush, because you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. But once you get married, you don't have to sneak around anymore. But you've developed an appetite for sneaking around sex that sex and marriage can never satisfy that appetite because you don't have to sneak around. And this is why a man will begin to talk to someone at the office and begin to flirt, and he is satisfying, and I'm going to say this in a very strong way, but he's satisfying an appetite that you created in him. And I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm trying to get you to understand how important it is not to create an appetite in someone before your marriage. Don't stir up love before. You see how manipulative this guy is, right? Like you, you always have to blame somebody else. You always have to blame somebody else. So he had so many messages of this type, okay, preaching, using himself as an example, and he says that, oh, before I came to the Lord. By the time uh, this incident that happened between him and Cindy, he was already a preacher. He was already 20 years old, but... You know, so all this time you're just telling lies to make yourself like, you know, people should think that it was all up and up. No, it wasn't. It was not. Okay. When Cindy was doing the interview, she also shared that she doesn't go to church. Okay. She has visited a church, but she's not a member of any church. She still prays. She still reads the Bible. That tells me that she's, She's, she lost faith in, in the church. I'm sure that incident had something to do with it, okay? Which is not good, which is not good. And she also shared that she was uh, at a church where she noticed a man was trying to groom a, a, a little, you know, a little one, and she warned the parents, and so much so that uh, that gentleman was reported to the police and that gentleman was put in jail. So you can see that this type of behavior makes people have nothing to do with the church. Remember, the bride of Christ is pure. When people do these things, they are doing th these things in opposition, in contradiction to what a church is and to what a church represents. Because we know that is not the behavior of a church. You see what I'm saying? But the time that we live in, right, that account is laid uh, uh, on the church. And honestly speaking, who can blame them? So now, instead of us paging these evils among the church, we'll be like, oh, no, that person was restored. Put them back on the pulpit. You see? Put them back on the pulpit. It should not be so. We are acting like the Bible hasn't spoken, like there's no way how to navigate these things. 
we have things to navigate these things in scripture. We should just trust the scriptures. We should just believe uh, w- what the scripture teaches. But let's uh, listen to some more, okay? And what will happen is this, this man will begin to have an affair, and now he's sneaking around. And he's beginning, he'll, he'll begin to feel like with her like he felt with you before you got married. And he associates that feeling with love. So he'll begin to think that he loves her and not you. So he divorces you, marries her, and guess what? He doesn't have to sneak around anymore. This is why many men will say, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. And then they will bring things into their sex life that God didn't intend to try to spice it up, quote unquote. It's not the same. Because you create an appetite. I'm, I'm telling you that my wife and I, we had to deal with things that we should not have had to deal with because of my sin. And I asked the Lord after I got uh, saved, God, what, what was the root? Why? You know, they said I was blessed. I know I wasn't blessed. I was cursed. Multiple, multiple affairs. And I don't understand this, God. And so what was the root? What was the open door in my life? And I want to show you a scripture I showed you a few weeks ago, but it's going to kind of shock you when, when you see this. Hebrews 12, verses 15 and 16 says, Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. This word means morally defiled. Many, this is my life. What you're reading this verse is my life. Many became morally defiled. Now watch the very next verse, but it's the same sentence. And I just want to take the first five words. Lest there be any fornicator. It goes on, or profane person among you. Okay, lest there be a fornicator. Don't let a root of bitterness spring up, or many will be morally defiled because there will be a fornicator among you. I was the fornicator. And I was the, I believe this open door in my life was because there was a root of bitterness in our family. Yes, there you have it, guys. Honestly, I am not a preacher. Uh, I could be wrong, but I've never heard that bitterness being tied to, you know, you, you know that behavior. I've never heard about that. So, what you know, I'm, I'm not saying that he wasn't bitter. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you feel rejected. Okay, it is true. Like, you know, people feel rejected, so they try to get that... Uh, to experience love in the wrong places, right? Like that's why you want to have both families intact. Because if it's not, people are going to look love in else places. That is actually true. That part is true, right? Like, you know, we families and children, we understand that part. But to me, and then he says like, oh, the things that he had to do with, with his wife. So the, the way he's explaining it, all these things took place before he came to know the Lord. So, you know, that doesn't mean if you come to the Lord, you're not going to sin. That's not my point, right? The point that I'm trying to make is there is some discrepancies how he presents himself. At what, okay, so if he's saying that he's, he stayed pure since the Cindy incident, so when was these things taking place? I don't know. Like, it's all over the place. It's very confusing, okay? But all in all, it's, you know, this man preached lies, okay? Because he said he was a young lady and it was a 12-year-old child. So what else did he lie about? What else did he lie about? Okay? The wife hasn't said anything. According to the wife, she was told that, oh, he was counseling her. But who knows how many people he... Because like when you lie like that, you cover it up. You have to, you, you, you have to keep on lying, okay? To maintain the, uh, the status quo of lies. Okay. So it looks like now there's, um, looks like there's a, I don't know if it's a purge. Okay. There's been some adjustments, some changes at uh, Gateway Church. Okay. Let me show you. Okay. So this is uh, Gateway Church where Robert Morris was the senior pastor. Okay. So this is what they have on their website. It didn't look like this before when we were looking into these things. So it says, update to Gateway Congregation from Gateway Church Elders. Thank you for your grace, prayers, and support for all members of our Gateway Church family in recent days. The Gateway Board of Elders is committed to leading with integrity and humility as we navigate this difficult season together. So read the full update. So they've put... um, the update over here okay so before when you come in you would actually see you know 
uh, the elders, stuff like that. So right now, like you have to, uh, you have to dig deeper to find out like, okay, so who are the elders? Okay. So update where to get a congregation from the board of elders. So thank you for your, um, for your grace, your prayers, your support. So this is, you know, it's a wrong thing. We're not going to read it all of it. So this is how, you know, statement to the congregation. So they've issued a statement to the congregation. But now, before, they, they, their side didn't look like this. So you have to look to find out, okay, so who are the elders, okay? What's a, what, what, what exactly is this, okay? So about, they just have this. Before, it was all Robert Morris over here. You click about, you're going to find Robert Morris. Oh, this is how he started the church. So now you have to be like, okay, so now where are the, 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 the ministries, right? Like you, it's very difficult even for you to find. Like, so who are the elders? Okay. You, they will just have the locations over here. I'm like, okay, can I, I want to see. Because most of the time people will lead to you and show you like, okay, the elders. Okay. They just have stories over here. So. Yeah, it's very difficult to even find uh, the elders. It's not like they don't have the elders. They do. But you have to look deeper to find the elders, okay? So you act, I had to find the elders in a different menu. So now, uh, you know, Associate Senior Pastor James Morris, okay? Uh, I think they've changed it over here because I don't see the, the, uh, the female preacher. So, okay, I guess maybe on the leadership staff, is that, what it, is that where she is? Okay, so here it is, okay, the lead team. So Bridget Morris, who is the wife to James Morris. So this is James Morris who has taken over from the father. Okay, from the father. But I had to go to a different website to find this. So <laughs> they're trying to make sure that when you're looking, <laughs> you will find a difficulty to find any traces of Robert Morris. So, uh, Desta has dropped, uh, Robert Morris. Okay. Robert Morris. So you have to, uh, look. And then he was still in charge of the schools and everything. So it looks like he's resigned from everything else. Okay. Yes. His wife. Was... Oh yeah. So I guess if Morris is gone, so is his wife. Cause how are they going to keep the wife there? You know, <laughs> it's a package deal. If Robert is gone, so is the other one. 